Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. In today's show, we venture into the frigid cold of late December to do a little winter fly fishing for Great Lakes Steelhead. We will learn about rigging options, presentation techniques, and how to properly dress for winter fly fishing conditions. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. That was awesome. Let him go back to live another day. These are extremely strong fish. Here he goes. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a perfect example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat. Sweet music, sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. In today's show, I joined two friends to do a little winter steelhead fishing. Most people think of angling for steelhead in the Great Lakes, principally in the spring during the spawning runs and in the fall when the fish come into tributaries to feed. What many anglers don't realize is that many steelhead remain in the rivers throughout the winter and in fact small runs of fish will actually come into the systems during the winter to feed. However, have no illusions. The fishing can be tough. For those who can deal with some cold, getting out in the winter to do some fishing sure beats sitting around the house dreaming about the spring. Two days before we left for this fishing trip Air temperatures have been relatively stable, but literally less than 48 hours before we left, temperatures have plummeted. This could really impact our chances of hooking into some fish. Together, we will fish in three states, namely Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. My companions are Jeff Blood and Patrick Keller. Jeff is a fanatical and experienced steelhead fisherman. We have enjoyed many trips to fish for steelhead in Pennsylvania. Patrick, who recently moved from out west to join Orvis, is fairly new to steelheading, but is an extremely experienced nymph fisherman. As in all winter sports, it is important to dress appropriately for the conditions. For fly fishers, that means taking a layered approach so that perspiration from walking and hiking is wicked away. There should be some fish line right there uh, at the tail end of this pool where that piece of uh, first piece of white snow is in the middle. And then on down around in that riffle down below through uh, where it flattens out again down there. And then there'll be another spot around the curve that we'll catch a few fish in. You guys ready? Yep. We have begun our winter fishing odyssey in Pennsylvania on Walnut Creek. This is a renowned steelhead fishery which produces large numbers of fish between 3 to 12 pounds. In both the spring and fall, anglers can count on good runs of steelhead. This is probably my favorite region in the Great Lakes to fish. We begin the day by having Jeff take us out onto some ice to search for steelhead at the tail of a long pool. Steelhead will often congregate in the open water, feeding in the open sunlight. The best way to angle for steelhead in these conditions is nymphing. Okay, in winter steelhead fishing, uh, obviously you have more hazards than uh, you need to deal with in normal fishing conditions. And the first thing is, is kind of your transition onto this shelf ice. You don't want to just step down onto it because one, you don't know how deep it is right here. So you want to slide off the bank and kind of break through a little bit with your feet. And uh, I just kind of shuffle along to where I get out to the edge if I can and make my cast. I don't necessarily break all the ice off, but we'll see if we can or can't do it. I don't know, guys. If we can. Looks like it's going to hold my weight. And we're dealing with a lot of slush ice. And I'm going to stay back away from the edge because it normally gets thinner on the edge. <clears throat> In winter steelheading, you have to be willing to constantly move from one open area to another, continuously searching for active fish. Pools, riffles, bend pools, and any other open area that is free of ice can potentially hold steelhead. The key is to quickly work over promising water, then move on to the next location until you locate fish. 
That is why it is ideal to wear cleats or corkers, which will help you transition between water and snow without the usual ice buildup on the bottom of your boots. The ice buildup can be both bothersome and dangerous. So I strongly recommend you purchase a system such as corkers to augment your wading gear. In October, Jeff and I had fished the same waters for steelhead during the fall run. The presentation techniques he explained at that time are the same we're using now. Jeff, could you explain a little bit about how we're fishing here, why, you know, why we're fishing here, you know, in terms of where the steelhead are lying and the rig that you've got set up? Because this is really important. And we've talked a lot in the car on the way here about presentation. Could you articulate a little bit about that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, you want to locate the water that the steelhead like to lie in. And what I do as far as um, the stream is I'll quadrant it off and I'll fish close to me like I'm fishing right here in front of me. And I'm uh, then going to just keep working it out. If you notice, I went a few more feet out farther. I hit the bottom right there. And um, want to bring that through most of the pool, see if we can locate some fish. Now, as far as my rig, it's a, it's a rig that I fish almost everywhere. It's the nine and a half foot leader. It's the uh, uh, two fly rig with a split shot about 18 inches above it. And the indicator I almost always have up uh, at the tip of the fly line. Mm -hmm. And that, that's because I want to get the fly to the bottom before uh, I start to feel anything. And I need, you need to have a little bit of uh, length into the leader. There's a lot of structure that I can feel out there right now because I do have a lot of weight, so I'm, I'm feeling the bottom as well as watching the indicator at the same time. Okay, Colin, if you notice what I'm doing here is I'm stepping forward into the stream, and the reason I'm doing that comes back to that grid uh, approach to the stream where you quadrant it off, and now we're trying to just reach across the current and fish the other side of the pool with a nice natural drift. And uh, the way this pool is right now, and, and the, the way the water's flowing, the fish are probably going to be lying, if they're up here this high, over along that seam that's mm -hmm. on the other side of the bank. Yeah, there'll be some nice and, current breaks in there. Yes, and, and that seam right there where I'm into now is, if there's fish in here, probably where they're going to be lying, maybe just a little closer. Okay. If you stand back and you make the cast from 10 feet back, what you do is you diminish your ability to throw a natural drift. A really good caster can, a uh, good fisherman, but um, what you're now contending with more water, more distance, there's drag in this water down here in front of you as you're fishing. If your line's down on the water like that, you just create instant drag, which is then uh, makes your presentation a lot, more, uh, lot less natural than uh, it needs to be to get the fish to take it. time of year the steelhead have a tendency to move into uh, areas of the river that are more sanctuary for them. Uh, not only do they have to worry about predators, but they have to worry about shelf ice uh, floating down the stream. So what I've been looking for <clears throat> is deeper water uh, that transitions into pool, and I believe that they're going to be laying uh, right out through this uh, run right here, <clears throat> probably on the edge. and. Uh, we're going to go ahead and prospect this and see if we can find a few fish. What we're um, also encountering is there's a lot of surface slush ice that's formulating because water uh, or the air temperature is uh, down was down in the teens last night. <clears throat> it's warming up right now. Um, the slush is starting to come off. But what that does is uh, it keeps your fly from getting down in because as you cast out, obviously the slush is floating your line will catch up on it. You don't necessarily get the kind of drift you would in normal fishing conditions. So uh, as you can see where my indicator is out there, I'm just trying to bring it through right in that soft, sweet spot of the pool right there, and I got bottom. 
but uh, that's how you catch fish. And you do have to strike often, even though you, you're not sure if you got bottom or uh, a fish on there, because probably 50% of the time it is a fish. And I have to redo my split shot here. We'll make a couple more casts, and I think we got to catch one in here. Well, one of the things you can expect when you're doing this type of nymph fishing in the winter, a lot of break-offs, uh, and I don't mean on fish, I'm talking about the ice. I've already lost probably half a dozen flies, and the problem you get is the slush and anchor ice on the bottom. It uh, does a little bit of abrasion on your leader and your tippet material, and so you're going to lose a lot of flies. But that being said, the steelhead are here. We've got to look for them. We've got to jump around a lot look in these pockets and we'll find them. As you can see, it's minus 12, but you know, the sun's out, temperatures are good. There's a little bit of slush on the, on the water right now, but I know we're gonna find some fish. It's just a matter of time. We've been working pretty hard today trying to find some fish in this uh, winter steelhead expedition here. And I've found a pool where I think there should be good fish and what I want to do is throw up into the top of this pool and come down through it. They should be laying right here off my rod tip and I uh, just want to make a natural drift through it. Right there would look like a strike. We're going to give this a good try here. This is ideal. And I saw some spawning beds down low. Uh, down there in that riffle. So I think the fish are in here somewhere. And hopefully we can get them to feed on us. We've also uh, got out of the surface slush, so I can make a drift here. And I'm gonna try another split shot in here in a second. Despite our best efforts, we had no success in either Pennsylvania or Ohio. So we jumped in the trucks and drove to the state of New York. Our first stop was at 18 Mile Creek, where we began fishing at the dam, working our way down river. As in the other states, the unseasonably cold temperatures seemed to have given the steelhead lockjaw. Thankfully, we were unaffected by the cold as we were properly dressed for winter conditions. Patrick Keller took a few minutes to speak about clothing options for anyone who wants to fish in these type of conditions. Uh, dressing warm, fleece gloves, Fingerless, I can still tie flies and uh, stay nice and warm. You know, huge help. They slide on and off easy for when I'm landing fish. Uh, <clears throat> have a, a fishing specific jacket. Nice thing is it's got waterproof cuffs. Cinch those down when you're landing fish. Keeps you dry. You can tail the fish and, uh, you know, go deep in the water. You're going to be perfectly dry for the rest of the day. Uh, most important is that it's breathable. <clears throat> I like to hike around and walk quite a bit when I'm fishing. And so, uh, if I'm going from one spot to the other, you know, I want something that'll breathe and uh, keep me nice and nice and cool when I'm really working hard. At the same time, keep the heat on when I'm standing, you know, waist deep in water and really freezing out there. It's got uh, ventilated pet zips, waterproof pockets, uh, all sorts of little features. Early morning steelhead selection. It's got a nice little uh, light to uh, find my flies. <clears throat> Underneath that, I have a wool layer. Uh, this has got a nice wool outer shell. It's got a uh, water-resistant uh, outside called solar. Underneath that is another vest. Uh, this just kind of keeps the core temperature up, makes sure my ch chest is nice and warm. Then I have a wool mid-weight layer and a synthetic base layer. It's very important that I wear uh, synthetics and wool because I've been cotton and everything else can really get you damp and cold. And if you're working hard and sweating, then you stop and stand in the river, you're going to freeze. Uh, you want to keep something that keeps the heat and uh, water transfer flowing. The synthetics and wool do a great job. Uh, going down to my waders have a uh, nice fleece heavy pants underneath that with a wool base layer underneath that. Uh, these are five layer waders. They come with uh, boot foot. Boot foot's very important for steelheading. It keeps your feet much, much warmer than stocking foot. These are nice because they have a uh, lace-up system, so I still have the stability of a stocking foot wader in a uh, boot foot warmth. On top of that, I have these uh, Orvis stream cleats. These are great. These things slip on and off real easy on top of my uh, wading shoes. Otherwise, your felt, when you go from water to snow, are going to ice up and get lots and lots of, uh, you know, build up underneath there, makes it a little treacherous. 
these have a nice hard plastic, shed snow and water really easily. Great cleats, does a great job. Um, that's kind of how I dress for a nice cold day. Steel heading today is probably about 15, 16 degrees. Uh, water temperatures, you know, 30s, 35s, and I feel great. Like our clothing, the equipment we use has to be top quality. Temperature extremes, coupled with strong fighting steel head, dictates that you use the best equipment you can afford. I like quality large arbor reels, such as the Orvis Mock series, which have a superior drag system, which can handle both wet and icy conditions, as well as screaming runs from a fresh steel head. For rods, we like using fast action models, such as the Orvis Zero Gravity series, in a 10 foot for seven weight size. The 10 foot length helps mend our line and provides good presentation, which is critical to your success. Additionally, the extra length helps cushion lightning fast charges from a fresh steelhead that you may hook. We still had no luck trying to entice a bite from a steelhead. The plummeting temperatures were really impacting the fish. So once again, we jumped into our trucks and drove eastward to Oak Orchard. This system is well known for both steelhead and huge brown trout, especially in the fall. Oak Orchard is a river that is relatively easy to wade with lots of great holding water. At this time of year, there are virtually no crowds, even though there can be a lot of steelhead. Dead drifting nymphs and egg patterns through any promising water is usually your best bet, but there are other options. Patrick Keller talked about how to use small streamers to entice a strike from steelhead and other species. His presentation methodologies are useful at virtually any time of the year. So we're doing a little winter steelheading, and uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm uh, winter steelheading is kind of tailor my lines and my flies to the condition. Uh, first thing I look at is depth and speed of water, and that'll determine what kind of line I use, whether it be a floating line with a uh, weighted you know, a streamer or a, or a split shot on it versus a, a mini sink tip, which is about a you know, floating line, about four foot sink tip all the way down to a full sinking line and uh, to really get down deep and swing flies. So uh, that kind of determines, you know, based on what I'm, what I'm doing by the water current temperature or water current depth and, uh, and speed. Secondly is what kind of flies I'm using, uh, whether it be weighted, uh, you know, for the undulation, stranded, uh, you know, regular streamer. And uh, what I'm doing first in this first run is right here, just kind of slowly Bouncing flies along the bottom. It's kind of cold water, and the and the weather's you know freezing out here. The fish are moving pretty slow, so just bounce these flies on the bottom real slow, just like you would a nymph in a dead drift. Uh, next thing you can do is give a cast out there and give a good bend to the uh, bend to the belly, and have these strip flies coming real slow strips like this. It could even be just to raise of the rod tip a little bit, let that thing kind of undulate up and down, up and down. Uh, if you're out there in summer conditions, the water's a little warmer. It may be kind of nice to get those fish really agitated. You give kind of short, sharp little strips, stop, fast, stop. All different good ways to kind of get fish to react. And uh, it's good to have a variety of stripping methods, a variety of lines, and a variety of flies to make the most out of your streamer fishing. After two days of hard fishing, we still had no success. So we decided to go home. The cold temperatures had turned the fish off. Even in cold temperatures, you can still catch steelhead if the temperatures can be stable for a few days. My cameraman and I stopped at Salmon River in Altmar, New York to give it one last try. You can guess who hooked into a nice steelhead. Barry caught this fish dead drifting a small white zonker. Steelhead will often pick off stunned or injured minnows that are drifting in the current. Despite the cold, the fish fought well, and Barry had to work hard to land it. Well done to my cameraman. Oh yeah, that's a steelhead. Bring him in. Take your time. Well done, Barry. Okay, check his. Okay, lift him up again. 
Nice. Okay, let him go. The Ontario steelhead. Get him out in the current. Got a little pickle. Ooh, that's cold, but that's fun. Now I'm gonna warm up my hands. We hope you learned a lot in today's show, and to discover more about our series, please visit us on the internet at www.thenewflyfisher.com.